Hi, here's Christine of yesnomas.com and today Paul and I, we are here at the Ur Pilsner Urquell Brewery in Pilsen and our guide Jan Stinsbier is now so kind and sh shows us around the brewery. Pilsner Urquell, which was born right here at mm -hmm. this brewery. The history of this brewery begins in 1839 mm -hmm. when uh, 260 licensed brewers of the city of Pilsen decided to establish a rather joint brewery in order to save reputation of the Pilsen beer. This beer type style became so widespread that 70% of all the beers produced around the world are Pilsen type beers. Okay, now we can go to the courtyard and I will show you some interesting structures here. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side we have the most uh, dominant structure of this brewery. Water tower built in 1907, supposedly as a replica of some Dutch lighthouse. It has lighthouse appearance for a reason, so that when travelers were coming to Pilsen could see that here is the ocean of beer. Oh. It's about 50 meters high. By the way, same height as the Statue of uh, Liberty. Mm -hmm. Old brew house, where we will go later, is in the yellow building. And the new one, where Pilsen Urquell is brewed since 2004, is in the glass building right next to it. Mm -hmm. We'll also have a chance to look inside that one. Here you can see uh, different means of beer transportation. In early days, uh, beer used to be delivered by horse pulled carts. This tradition is actually still kept alive even today. Yeah. We have one lady who delivers Pilsen Urquell twice a week to the most traditional pubs in Pilsen. Hmm. Uh, later on, with the development of steam engines, uh, beer trains came along and this was one of the first breweries in the world which uh, had its own railroad system moving directly from this expedition area as early as 1880. And 15 years later, again one of the first breweries which purchased its own train locomotive, which was called Gambrinus. So now we stand in front of the central packaging hall, mm -hmm. which is uh, almost seven years old, and it's still one of the most modern in Europe. Inside you will see four filling lines from German company Kronens. The size of this building is 20,000 square meters mm -hmm. by football field. Investment was worth 46 million euros. So far, the biggest investment here, probably ever. Including 24,000 bottles fit in there at once, and there are watch for about 10 Big small bus in here actually. Yeah. It's certainly the largest elevator I've ever been in. I'm sorry? It's certainly the largest elevator I've ever seen. Yeah. Usually you have freight elevators this big. Yeah. Because people, because we get uh, up to 50 people on the train right. sometimes. Okay. What's the busiest month? Is it, would it be now? May, June are the busiest. <laughs> Malt is already a little bit sweeter and softer. If you don't have allergies to gluten, you can sample barley and malt mm -hmm. and notice the difference. As far as color, Pilsen malt you can tell the difference between the Pilsen malt and raw barley. Mm -hmm. Pilsen malt is the palest of all malts on the spectrum. I think the next one in color, a little bit darker, is Viennese. Mm -hmm. The color of the malt determines the color of the beer. If you want to make pale beer, you will use pale malt. But if you want to make dark beer, beer you will use roasted malt. And of course, there's anything in between that. 
And here we have hops. Mm. Granulated chick sauce hops. Hops are the spice of beer. Malt is the soul of beer. Okay. These are chick sauce hops, which are the most expensive hops in the world. I love a good hoppy taste. I love hoppy beers. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you will like those work on. Yeah. <laughs> Czech sauce hops, that goes with the regions where they are grown. It's not too far from Pilsen, about 50, it starts out about 50 kilometers northeast from here. Okay. And three other German hops form what they call noble European hops. They all have very noble, fine aroma and delicate bitterness, mm -hmm. especially the sauce. And so they're not hybrids and the yields therefore are not so high. Mm -hmm. Those cones are actually pretty light compared to other hops. Uh, so if you want to get the bitterness, you have to use quite a lot of them yeah. and pay, pay the high price. So nobody's really getting rich over there because you know the yields are, are quite low. Mm -hmm. This old brew house has been used for almost 75 years until 2004. That's when the new one was built, and this one is now a museum. Mm -hmm. In 2007, it was remodeled and restored back to its original beauty. So this is pretty much what it used to look like in 1931. When so this is the new one, the new brew house, which has three brewing sets. That one had six, but these are bigger. One mash ton, which is the second one on the top. Filtration is done. Mm -hmm. it used to be done on the same mash tun at the old brew house. And then sweet work goes through the tube. Basically, in production of beer, usually it's like a three phase process. You know, most breweries don't have mold house, so it would be just two. Uh, they just buy already prepared mold. And we have our own, always had. Uh, so the, the, the mold house number now, number five now is the fifth one mm -hmm. uh, in a row. Mold house where you make mold, brew house where you make hopped wort, bittersweet liquid, and then the fermentation, that's where it finally gets interesting where the beer is done. But the brew house is pretty much everywhere called the heart of the brewery because this is where the most important process takes place. It's actually quite complicated. Mm -hmm. Does this ever go wrong or is it so automated now that it can't? Uh, it's the computers, you know, they have sensors and the computers monitor the process and if, you know, they would have to fall asleep behind yeah. the computer yeah. for it to go, to go bad. Uh, the, the temperature, 37 degrees centigrade, mm -hmm. is very critical. Uh, if you, if you uh, let it at that temperature too long, or if the elect electricity went out, mm -hmm. Uh, you can just throw it away. I don't think it has happened, right. uh, but uh, it's very critical because they would, you know, that's the aesthetic uh, breaking temperature, warming temperature, and uh, if you expose it too long to that, then it will get, it will just get sour. Right. Right? It's not reversible. Yeah. Of course, Josef Grohl has to be here, a very mm -hmm. brew master uh, who came here from Vilshofen, and he came here with, uh, at the time, very precious lager yeast, modern fermenting yeast. Only 3% of all the Czech beers were lagers at the time, mostly ales and stouts, right. or wheat beers. And this right here is the holy grail of Hillsborough mm Quell. -hmm. This is the original open top kettle where the first Pilsner beer was made. But it wasn't called, called Urquell until 1898. distinguished visitors who came into the brewery are listed over here. Crown Prince Rudolf from the Habsburg family was here in 1871 and drank from this Czech crystal glass that the brewery made for that occasion. Grand Duke Vladimir Alexandrovich was here in 1897 and he was uncle of the last Russian Tsar Nikos. Drank from that one. And the most uh, prominent visitor here back then was 
the Caesar of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Franz Josef I, drank from this crystal glass. Below we have his signature, and if you look closely enough, you can notice that he made a mistake while he was trying to sign in Czech. Mm -hmm. Of course, he had a few beers in him already from that beautiful glass, so he forgot. He signed in uh, German, Franz. First four letters are the same, just a Z, when he realized that he wanted to do it in Czech. He overwrote to T, and then he continued. <laughs> One of the oldest parts of the Louvre is this entrance, as you can see, 1839. They started digging the cellars. At the same time, they started building the brewery. Underground, they could have low temperatures. Now be careful down there because it's quite humid, 93%. So it's always wet and might be oh, slippery. Mm -hmm. And also, walls are sprayed with white lime. So don't get too close to them, otherwise, it's going to get all over you. <laughs> Basically, you have to dress up nice and warm for down here because it's six degrees, so about 42 Fahrenheit. So you make sure you bring a jumper if you visit this in the, in the summer. Here is the map of this underground uh, cellar. The map wow. here, try and memorize it just in case you get lost. <laughs> These whole bats and inside the ones that are marked is the river location. On the 1st of August, they refilled them once again with the hot work, which was brewed upstairs in the new rooms. Unique post workflow type H yeast were added, and those yeasts start to saturate with the sugars and make alcohol for 12 days. Scroll. Hmm? The temperature keeps rising because those yeasts also produce heat and uh, they need to keep it below 10 degrees otherwise uh, it's too warm and undesirable fermentation would begin more esters would be produced yeah. Typical Pilsner though, that's why you know, I carefully said directly or indirectly, but typical Pilsner beer has to be made of soft water, should be made of soft water, it has to be made of barley for malt, nothing but barley. Sometimes breweries will use cheaper rice, like 40% rice, 60% barley, 40-50% uh, corn, 50% barley, you know, substitutions. Uh, and Pilsners also should be generously hopped, so more bitter. Mm -hmm. Pilsner drinkers expect more spicy beer. Yeah, because that's, that's why generally I don't drink lagers. I don't enjoy them. I prefer um, a hoppy light ale uh -huh. in, in England. IPA? But yeah, yeah, uh -huh. exactly that kind of thing. But, so if, if you're used to like, drinking, I never had IPA. I'm going to try it. But right. how would you, how would you, because you know, Pilsner is like the Czech IPA, mm. sort of like not ale, but you know, not so bitter. But how's the bitterness compared to what you are used to? Because I, 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 uh, India Pale Ales will have like 80 units. Right. And it's different. Bitter, yes. Right? Yes, so it, it is. Is, it so much, is it much more bitter than this? I wouldn't say it's necessarily much more bitter. This is definitely sweeter. Um, depending on the alcohol content, of course. But um, some of the microbreweries in America, you have their IPAs and they're way too alcoholic and they're just sweet and not so nice. But the others are pretty good. But this is, this is very pleasant, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but he's like, oh, I understand that, you know, here it's like, it feels no oracle, it's a must. And I told him, well, yeah, notice, the glasses are made bigger. And yeah. this is, uh, this line, you should get your beer, sometimes in Czech bars, you gotta be careful, you will not even get it to that. Mm -hmm. But in, you should get your beer with so much, this much beer and the rest foam. The foam is there for good reason. As long as it stays, it's like a, it's like a seal, okay. protection seal. It keeps the CO2 aroma inside the beer and it prevents beer from oxidization. Once the foam goes away, beer is deteriorating mm. every, by every minute. 
Uh, also, this foam stays on the glass. It's mm -hmm. a sign of a quality beer and also clean glass. Yeah. When you see it, you know, the rings already went down, but you know, after, you know, when you take a few sips, the bigger the sips, the, you know, the, the foam will, the layer will stay on top yeah. or on the glass. So you can see how many sips you took and how big they were. <laughs> And if the glass has been cleaned with the proper detergents, if you use regular household detergents, the foam will go straight down and, it, and the foam will also disappear faster. Because the trace of the detergents will kill it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, yeah, I think so. I think so. But the, you know, the, the detergents are so aggressive, they will still remain on the glass. Yeah. And usually they are very citrusy, ref, mm -hmm. you know, refreshing with citrusy. So unless you want Rala beer, with citrusy aroma, you don't want you don't want to clean it, or you have to really extra rinse it with water. Yeah. It's, it's it's so aggressive it will stay it'll stay on the surface of the glass. Before beer is drafted into a glass, glass again if it's if it's dried, if it has dried meanwhile, you need to rinse it again or moisten it rather, not clean it because it's already clean, mm -hmm. but moisten it because beer should not be. Uh, it's better if you pour uh, beer inside moistened glass. Okay. Even the bottles when they're filled, they're actually just been rinsed and then they are flipped back up and filled with beer. Also, what are the three types of how you serve the beer, how you can serve it? You have mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, milk. Actually, I think there are four. Milk is just nothing but the foam. It's pretty pipe. It's sometimes popular during summertime. Uh, it's more sweet. Mm -hmm. And it's you know refreshing, so you chug it down right away. Uh, no CO2, you know, because it's all in the foam already. Uh, so you should be served for small beer if you if you ask for milk. Mm -hmm. no, it's not a full beer. If you if you do milk, it's nothing but the foam. Uh, the foam is very wet, so you will get about this much beer out of it. Yeah. You know? But it picks up the, the, the sweetness, so it's uh, ladies sometimes get that if right. they know if they know it. Then the second style is uh, Schnitt, which is like half, you know, about half beer, half foam. It's also small beer. And then you have uh, Smooth. I believe that's you know with the foam at the first. And then you have Crisp style. And if you go to the restaurant Naspilza, you can have at least three, three of those styles. So, this is the ice room behind me. Mm -hmm. This was like the refrigerator of my ancestors without any electricity. Keep in mind that on a hot summer day, when it's uh, 30 degrees outside, like today maybe, the natural temperature here is about 14 degrees. That is still too warm for the fermentation. So they had to get ice, which they would chop up and harvest in the winter. Mm -hmm. Ice would be brought down through the holes into the ice rooms. When it started to warm up again, spring, summer, ice would slowly melt into freezing cold water, which would flow through the channels, mm. cooling down the temperature to desirable six degrees or even lower. 